The product and UI and UX design industry is evolving. Tools are becoming more and more powerful. Responsibilities are also increasing. And the types of projects that we are working on are becoming more and more complex. According to the Digital Journal, the UX service market in the US alone was valued at $19.2 billion in 2022. Now, when the project stakes are higher, so are the risks. And that's where designers can come in and take on more responsibility to bring in better tools and better workflows to help the companies de-risk themselves. Now, I have been designing and prototyping with Figma for many years now. The tool is good for basic transitions between static screens, but where it does fall short is when realistic and high fidelity prototyping is required. Now, don't get me wrong, there is always a time and place for different tools. Figma is probably more suitable for showcasing the sequence of screens to a developer. However, if you wanted to test the actual experience with all the bells and whistles, with all the interactions, or prove a concept for something more complex like a game, or even a car display. Or even a prototype that uses voice activation. What are you looking for? Animation movies. Okay, which animation movie do you like? Now, I am so grateful to say that the sponsor of this video is Protopy, and Protopy are the ones that have enabled high fidelity prototyping to happen. It is one of the few tools that I love and genuinely believe are doing incredible work. Now, here's a quick comparison of a few key differences between Figma and Protopy. Now, Figma's prototyping workflow is quite linear. To build a prototype, you literally have to link up every single screen. It's fine when you have four screens, but when you have multiple flows and sequences, it gets chaotic. And here's an example. All right, so I'm in Figma now, and imagine we have just completed the designs for four iOS screens. To create the prototype, I would have to make sure that I select the element that I want to create as a trigger. I can click on prototype, and then I can simply just drag and connect these screens. Now, as you can see, it is a more visual way of creating prototypes, but it is definitely more linear. And if you can imagine if we had more than 10, 20, 30, or up to even 40 screens, these links and these connections can create a very chaotic workspace. So here's a real example of a real project. I have nothing more to say. Now, on the other hand, Protopy has a trigger response based prototyping experience. Damn, that sounds smart. Which means you simply just select a type of trigger you want and then dynamically set the response of what should happen. This eliminates the need to have chaotic lines going all over the place and it's much easier to manage for all size projects. Now, here's an example. Here we have the exact four screens inside Protopy. Now, as you can see, if we wanted to go ahead and connect the get started button and connect it to the first step of the onboarding flow, we can simply select the button, head over to trigger, and when a user taps on this button, we can hit the plus sign and say we want to jump from this screen, right, the onboarding slash email screen to the onboarding slash verify screen. So we can select that from the next step. We can then choose any transition and easing that we want. We can also set the duration. And from here, we can also have more advanced control over the timeline of interactions. So we can hit the plus icon and actually do additional things and make more complex prototypes from here. As you can see, this is a much more dynamic way in creating prototyping flows. Now, in terms of interactivity, Figma allows no interactivity with the elements. If we want to showcase a login flow, here's Figma's approach. Now, when we are prototyping within Figma, there are many times when we want to create interaction or at least emulate interaction so the participant that we're testing with can sort of get a sense of what it's like to use the app. 
So for one example, which is wanting to allow users to input an email address, normally what we'll do is we'll go ahead and duplicate this screen. We'd then have to double click and change the, the content inside the actual input field. We'd have to then go ahead and change some of the styling to make it seem like it's inputted. And then we would have to go ahead and create the prototype. So if the user goes ahead and taps into this input field, we can then go and change it and transition to this screen. And then if they hit get started, we then might go ahead and change it to the following screen over here. In terms of the animation, we might go ahead and do a slide in. So if we go ahead and prototype this quick flow, when the user goes ahead and hits on the screen, we sort of change and we can emulate that experience. And then if I hit get started, we then transition. So Figma doesn't allow any interactivity with their elements. Now, on the other hand, Protopie allows high interactivity with all their elements. This is how we can create a dynamic and interactive prototype with Protopie. Once again, we've got the same screens in Protopie, but this time around, I've already gone ahead to create a more dynamic prototyping experience. The goal is to show you guys some of the possibilities and opportunities that you can gain from using a tool like Protopie. So this is a very common occurrence. You might be wanting to create a prototype where when someone inputs their details or their email address over here, we might wanna showcase it dynamically on the next screen just to emulate what it would look like or feel like in a real life experience. So with Protopie, you can go ahead and drop down a dynamic input field as I've just done below. You can also create variables so you can store whatever information is inputted into this input into a variable. And then you can also dynamically pull that information out from this variable into this text over here. And it's actually very simple. So if I showcase you an example, if I hit run, you can see that if I type in, start typing in my email address, we can store it inside a variable. And if I hit get started, we can actually dynamically pull it through on this screen. This is the power of Protopie and this is just the beginning and we're only scratching the surface. Now, you can already see how much more realistic and engaging Protopie's method can be. Now, the fact that you can actually emulate a more dynamic experience means you don't actually have to go and build the entire product before testing it. Now, if we go ahead and also compare Figma's list of events for prototyping, we are limited by the very basic and static features like type and duration, which is totally fine for simple user flows and presentations. Here's an example. When it comes to prototyping in Figma, we generally will select the element that we want to create a trigger on, head to prototype, click and drag and connect two screens. Now with the modal for the interaction details, we can either change the click to a drag while hovering, while pressing a keyboard or gamepad key, mouse enter, leave mouse down or up. Now, these are perfect if you're creating, once again, a sequence of screens and a very quick and rapid prototype. But if you wanna do anything a little bit more complicated or more complex, you are restricted. On the other hand, once again, Protopie has an immense list of events we can tap into to create more realistic prototypes. Let me go ahead and show you what type of triggers they have to allow you to initiate a prototype. Here we are back in Protopie. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and click on a button and then I'm gonna hit add trigger. And as you can see, immediately we have six different categories of triggers, touch-based, conditional, mouse, key, input, and sensor. And then you can already see how many more triggers and possibilities and opportunities we can tap into to create really advanced and high quality prototypes. Now, in terms of the touch, Protopie covers all the fundamental and foundational touch triggers. Everything from tapping, pulling, dragging, pinching, and even rotating your phone. Now, some of the more powerful triggers include the conditional triggers. You can see that we can actually chain a sequence of events. We can then tap into specific ranges of what the user inputs. We can also start and also detect data that is being inputted into our interactive components inside Protopie. And I'll be walking you guys through an example of how we utilize the detect trigger to store information or the user's email address in the previous example in this video. Now, in terms of mouse, we can also create triggers based on where the mouse is moving. Is it over an element? Is it moving out of an element? We can also make a trigger set upon a key press. So if anyone presses a specific key on the keyboard, we can also cause a trigger. 
We can also set triggers whether the input of a application or a UI is being focused upon or if we have returned on a specific input field. And some of the more advanced and more intricate triggers provided by Protopie include sensory. So if you can use your voice, if you want to tap into sound, if you want to tilt your phone, if you want to utilize the compass that's native within the device, the list goes on and the possibilities are also endless. Now, I do want to show you a very quick example of how we utilize the detect trigger, which is something that does not even exist in Figma. So as you remember in a previous example, when a user typed in their email address, we were storing that email dynamically so we could showcase it in the next screen. So what's actually happened is that we've got an interactive input field over here. We've actually set a detect trigger on this input field and we are actually detecting the input and the text that's going to be typed inside the input field. When a user then types their email address into this field, we are actually then assigning, right? We are using the assign to assign that text inside a local variable which then can be reutilized. So if I hit run, when I type in this input field, it's actually being stored dynamically. And if I hit get started once again, it will show dynamically on the next screen. So this is where Protopy really differentiate itself from Figma as it allows you to tap into an endless amount of triggers that helps you build high quality and more advanced prototypes that emulate a real life scenario. Now, in terms of testing, Figma does have a fairly decent viewing experience to showcase your static user flows. The cloud-based approach means you can view your prototype in mobile and also desktop, but where it does fall short is how interactive it actually can be. Now, when it comes to viewing our prototypes in Figma, all we have to do is make sure our prototype has been set up we can click on the play button or gonna head up to the top right corner, hit play. And this will open up our prototype in a new window. Now with this prototype, we can obviously set the sizing to fit to the screen. And we also have some basic features in terms of uh, choosing what flows that we want to work with and also leaving a description. But from here, we can pretty much play and view our prototypes. So on the other hand, for Protopie, you can go ahead and download their app, scan a QR code, and actually experience the app as if it was real. Here I have the Protopy app opened. All I have to do is hit scan QR code, then actually head over to the application, scan the QR code, and this will load in the actual prototype itself. As you can see, it opens up the actual device, the actual prototype. I can then type in my actual email address, and you can see everything is working as intended to get started, and it actually showcases you the dynamic text. Now to really go ahead and summarize the key differences between Figma and Protopy for prototyping, here's a quick breakdown for you. As you can see, Protopy evidently provides so much more value than Figma when it comes to prototyping, whether that's for supporting different devices, allowing you to create interactive components that allow you to type real text into them, even drop in audio, video, and Lottie files that can play inside a prototype, doing advanced conditioning, create dynamic interactions, and so much more. Now, Figma, on the other hand, is purely focused around rapid prototyping for something that's quick, something that's easy, and something that you want to get to your stakeholders as quick as possible. It's not a dedicated prototyping tool. In the end, I believe we should all be using the right tools for the right job. Now, if you are working on a last minute project that needs to go into development tomorrow, prototyping with something really quickly and efficiently with Figma may be the right decision. However, if you are working on a much more complex project with a lot of moving parts, maybe even interacts with some of the hardware, or you want to go ahead and emulate something real, Protopie would hands down be the right choice. Now, if you are interested in checking out Protopie, make sure to check out the link in the description. You can also get started with a free plan and even follow one of my Protopie tutorials to start building something interactive today. So until next time, I hope you have a stellar day and I will see you guys in another video very soon.